Millennials are driving people crazy. For the last 10 years, from managers to top executives to university professors, this generation has been causing us to tear out our hair. We've labeled them with all sorts of unflattering adjectives like lazy and entitled. And in fact, we've given them the nickname of Generation Me, except we're wrong. Millennials are brilliant, energetic. They're a source of endless potential and new ideas. They hold two critical keys, new ways to solve problems and the passion and energy to do so. I discovered this by accident. As a university professor, I work with millennials every day. Millennials make sense to me. As one of the youngest of Gen X, I'm just a few years away from the millennial generation Close enough in age to understand them, but far enough away to be fascinated. So as a researcher of human behavior, I see millennials as an obvious product of the world that they grew up in. You see, millennials are the most educated group in human history. Never before have we invested so much in one group. So while prior generations grew up with this mantra of being seen and not heard, our millennials have had the opposite experience. Since birth, their development and their interests have been at the focal point of our attention. From mommy and me groups at age two to itty bitty soccer for four-year-olds, French language lessons for six-year-olds, the family schedule began to revolve around what the kids wanted and what the kids needed. So with trophies for everyone to protect that self-esteem, uh, these millennials, they've grown up with the idea that they have a voice and that they are important. So why then do we expect them to come into our classrooms and later our boardrooms with this idea that they shouldn't have a voice, that they shouldn't have a say? So I want to tell you a story. In 2008, I was invited to do a leadership development workshop at a company. They asked me to come in and explain to their managers how to handle those millennials. To them, millennials were a problem that needed to be solved. One woman in the audience raised her hand and she said, how do I get these kids to put their phones away and get some work done? And I thought, that's the wrong question. They are not putting their phones away. But what if we shifted the question and said, how could we get those kids to use the phones to do work that's important for all of us? Things that potentially could solve problems for our schools, our businesses, and our society. So since then, I've done dozens of these workshops. I work with leaders not to help them change the millennials, but to change themselves, to change their perspective on what the millennials bring to their workplace and what might be possible if they opened up their eyes to that idea. Because you see, generational differences are simply a very powerful kind of diversity. And in that diversity and the leveraging of those differences, we can develop what I like to call gentelligence. And in utilizing gentelligence, we can actually learn to solve our problems. So let me give you an example of how this has solved a problem in my life. In 2011, I was asked to take over a business leadership program for students here at Miami University. The program had been around for quite a while, and students were starting to kind of lose interest. So the first thing I wanted to do to re-energize this program was to make a new website. Kids these days like websites, right? So our old website was circa 1990s graphics, clip art. It was, it was not hip. Uh, so I requested a website update through proper organizational channels. I, I was put in the queue, and I was told it was going to be months before anyone would have time to, to process that request. So. I was very frustrated that same day I was talking to some of my students, millennials, who I had convinced to join this leadership program. And I said, how am I supposed to revolutionize this program if I can't even get a new website? And they said, we could make a website. 
And I said, you know how to make a website? Like, when could you make me a website? And they said, tonight? And they did. And it was this moment that blew open my whole world. It was my first lesson in Gentelligence. Because up until that point, I had always enjoyed working with millennials. I get energy from being around them. But I had really always viewed my role as being someone who was there to teach them. And this experience opened me up to the idea that maybe we were there to teach each other. So these lessons continued over the next few years. We worked together to come up with a vision and a strategic plan. And those millennials really helped us understand what was needed to create a cutting edge business leadership program for the 21st century. Just this last year, we opened our brand new Center for Business Leadership. And at the core of this program is the idea that the millennials, the new generation, they have such tapped talent, this untapped talent that will allow us to come up with new ways of thinking. We invite them to sit at the table. We ask for their input. And when we run into problems that we're not sure how to solve, we ask those millennials what they would do. Are they always right? No. Do they need feedback and coaching? Absolutely. Most millennials, they know they need mentors and they're hungry for them. But in truth, we need their reverse mentorship as well. Millennials are not a threat. We view them as a threat because they think differently than we do. But if you think about it, this kind of interaction is how we feel about almost every kind of diversity. Men see things differently than women. People of different races and ethnicities, they all have different lenses through which they see the world based on their life experiences. But just as we argue which of those lenses is more valid, we're, we're doing the same thing with generational differences. And if instead we can view those differences as a source of amazing opportunity, if we can leverage this idea of gentelligence, perhaps we're onto something. Einstein once said, we cannot solve our problems by using the same thinking we use to create them. And in this generational diversity, there are new ideas new solutions, new ways to solve our problems and possibly prevent them from happening in the future. In generational differences, there are answers. We just have to be willing to ask.